solid steel banded, evil even handed, equally secure, everything is safely concealed behind the door. Not even words or emotions can escape the confines of your hell. These walls could and do have a tale to tell. The scrawled name, verbal exchange, angry defiance, the splattering of blood told a bigger, more telling tale. Paul Blackburn was just 14 years old when a local nine-year-old boy was attacked and sexually abused in broad daylight in Manchester on the 25th of June 1978. The police were told they were looking for a young man with red curly hair. Now, although in many ways Paul did not fit this description, he was questioned five times, at the end of which he provided a written confession. It has, however, been contested as to whether Paul actually wrote the confession on his own. The language that was used was very untypical of a 15-year-old boy at that time. After 26 years in jail and 26 years of protesting his innocence, Paul Blackburn's conviction was finally quashed on the 25th of May 2005. Well, today I'll be speaking to Paul in person to hear his full and harrowing story. Okay, Paul, first of all, thank you so much for, for inviting us down today and for taking okay. some time out of your day to talk to us. Now, obviously, we're here to talk about your, the prison sentence that you were given, um, which you ended up actually staying in prison for 26 years um, for something that you, a crime that you didn't actually commit. Um, so I guess if we start way back at the beginning from when you were 14 years old, now I know that you'd been in a fair bit of trouble mm -hmm. before the, the crime actually took place. Um, at schools, you'd had trouble with, um, you'd been involved in the burning down of a part of a school, hadn't you? Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that, your experiences of, of your school life? Um, trouble you've got my, into. my school life wasn't actually that troubled. I was actually quite settled at school. Um, I mean, the, the actual burning of the school down wasn't an attack on the school. Uh, it was just, a, you know, uh, other people I was involved with at the time. Um, and, you know, inevitably we ended up into trouble because we were going out burgling places and stealing and uh, we actually broke into the school to sleep in there that night. Uh, it wasn't a specifically attacked at school because school, school for me was a safe place. Home wasn't a safe place for me, which is why I didn't mind school, and that's where all my friends were. Okay, so the police had obviously found out about different things that, mm -hmm. different areas of, of things that you've done and, and trouble. Do you think that they kind of tarred you with a certain brush and and said, right, he's a troublemaker, and that then led to them questioning you about? the crime of the young boy? In was. some ways, but I think mainly that actually targeted me because I was vulnerable. I was a very, very screwed up young kid. And, you know, they actually went out of their way to fabricate evidence to actually implicate me. You know, that doesn't happen accidentally. Do you think that the police were, in your eyes, were they under pressure to find the attacker? Do you think that had anything to do with the fact that they, when they, when they found you to question, do you think they were under pressure to sort of in a way, wanted not, not wanted you to be guilty, but do you know what I mean? Were they were they under pressure to find somebody, basically? They were under pressure to find somebody, but at the same time, being under pressure to find somebody doesn't mean you you make things up. I mean, I think they they convinced themselves of uh, uh, their own actions and what they were going to do. And what they were going to do was arrest me and convict me. Now, I know you had some problems with your father. Um, mm. He wasn't sort of the ideal role model, some might say. Can you tell us a little bit about the relationship you had with him? Um, I never really had a relationship with him. I was, he was somebody I was very, very scared of uh, because of the violence and uh, uh, the emotional, basically, abuse that he used to get from him. And, you know, it, it was like, you know, one of the things that always bothered me about the interviews with the police is that one of them looked exactly like my father. And it reminded me of when I was a kid and you know my earliest childhood memory of his when I was about three years old and being woken up at night and hearing my mum screaming and I actually went out to the landing to see what was going on and my dad was stamping on my mother's head really? you know she was lying on the floor and I must have shouted or screamed or done something because he turned around and came up to me but it's always that picture in my mind of his face in the half light where his face is you know basically nose to nose with me where he's you know shouting and snarling in my face and I, I couldn't actually even hear what he was saying or anything like that I was just so frightened of it. 
So that's always stuck with you, the kind of images yeah. of your father. Yeah. Do you have any good memories of your father? It was No. Were there any positive see really no. the only the only sort of role model you had was your father at that time? Yeah. Did that affect how you saw men in general? Yeah, it did. That you know, that and other things that went on at home and it it does today. I don't I don't have that many male friends. I've 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 uh, uh, um, uh, some and some I trust, you know, utterly and completely. But no, I don't really trust men. Ninety nine percent of my friends are with, uh, female. Has that just been reinforced by your 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 years in jail as well? Yeah, almost almost entirely, really, because um, everything about prison for me was was negative. And not only was it negative in the sense that nothing positive was done, it was negative in the sense that it was deliberately negative. You know, it was deliberately that I was, you know, effectively treated like an animal for 25 years. Now, I know you were put into secure care um, for committing some of the offences mm -hmm. that you did earlier on in your life. How, what were your experiences of, of being in care? Um, it was pretty much someone, something else just to survive really it wasn't uh, it wasn't uh, positive for me in any other sense other than it took me away from home uh, and that I was actually you know uh, quite grateful for and uh, actually enjoyed it far more than being at home oh really but at the same time it was you know it's it's a center full of young kids with lots of problems and you know essentially not really a good place to actually be putting people.